Hi, my name is Lavinia and this is Peter. Welcome to Games Made Easy, a channel for those who want to learn and get better board games quickly and easily. Today, to help Elo, I'm going to teach you and give you tips for three Carcassonne expansions, the river, the inns and cathedrals, and the traders and builders. You will need the Carcassonne base game to play these expansions. The river is probably the way the game should start. It's lovely and puts an immediate spin on the farms and the overall look of the game. The inns and cathedrals and traders and builders add a new dimension to the game without changing the rules that much. It enhances the game and makes it a little more competitive. If you're new to the channel, subscribe now. The expansions add flavor, but the gameplay is exactly the same as the Carcassonne base game. You make points by connecting roads, by closing cities, by surrounding monasteries with tiles, and by making farms. Now, before we explain the expansions, if you're not familiar with the base game, you should have a look at my video where I explain it. These expansions, you can play them individually, in combination, or all together. I'm going to explain them one by one. So, for the river expansion, you're going to replace the starting tile with this pretty river. You play the 12 river tiles before any other tile in the game. The tiles are marked with a water symbol here. Now, you find the tiles with the source and the mouth of the river. You place the source on the table and the mouth of the river on the side for now. Then you shuffle the 10 tiles that are left and you place them face down. Each player takes turns placing one tile and a meeple if they want, exactly like a Carcassonne game. You can place thieves, knights, monks and farmers like a normal game. So here, this one's going to be a knight. And let's see, the next one, this one is going to maybe take the farm. This one, even if they wanted to take a farm, they couldn't because this one has taken it. So it can't take any. Now this one will take the road and then it continues. Now make sure that you don't do a U-turn because that's the only thing you can't do with the river. Now this one will take a farm here and we'll go here and this one will become monk and we'll go down here. This one will take the road here, become a thief and this one won't take any and then even if the last player would like to take this farm it can't because it already belongs to the green here once you've placed the 10 tiles you start a normal carcassonne game with whatever tiles you've decided to use if you want to use the inns and cathedrals expansion you will shuffle the 18 tiles that come marked with a meeple symbol with the base game tiles you will also receive a meeple that is bigger than the others. The Inns and Cathedrals expansion gives you the opportunity to build bigger cities and longer roads, potentially giving you a lot more points or none at all. There are six tiles in the expansion with an inn on it. And basically what the inn does is when you close a road here and put a meeple, you would get two points instead of one. So for this, it would be six points. If you were to put it, say, here, this would only make four points because it's only one point because the inn is on this side of the road. So it wouldn't have, you wouldn't make two points on this side or that side for that matter. Now, if you don't complete the road by the end of the game, you score zero instead of one per tile. Note that it doesn't matter how many inns you have on the road, you will only score two points per tile. There are two cathedrals in the game. Cathedrals are used in the cities. When you complete a city that has a cathedral, you will score three points per tile and shield in that city instead of two. So if we were to close this city, it would make 27 points instead of 18 had the cathedral not been there. Again, if the city is not completed by the end of the game, you will score zero instead of the one point per tile and shield. Like for the inns, even if you had the two cathedrals in one city, you never score more than three points per tile and shield. Now, let's have a look at this big fella here. So, you place this follower like any other follower in the game, except it counts as two followers. So say it's the purple's turn and it sees an opportunity to take the road from the yellow. So in future rounds, if they get the tile to close the road, the purple has taken over the yellow and the yellow is out. 
If you want to play with the Traders and Builders expansion, you will take the 24 tiles that come marked with a pig symbol and shuffle them with the base game. You will also take one builder and a pig, and it also comes with additional goods like wheat, wine and fabric that will allow you to score points at the end of the game. Let's have a look at the builder first. Say for example it's the purple's turn and basically the builder is placed after placing the tile on a city or a road which already contains a follower of that player. So in this case we have a follower on the road. You do not need to own the road or the city just to have a follower on it. In this case the yellow owns the road but the purple can still place a builder. Now, in subsequent turns, whenever you add to this road, you can take a second turn. So say, for example, we put this on a following turn, the player can play again and places this road. Now, remember, it is not possible to play more than two turns in a row. And the builder is only collected when the road or city is completed. So it can be used for many turns. So say in a future turn, we get this tile, and the road is now closed, we can take the follower and the builder. As a second turn, we, can, we get this tile, we place it here, and we can immediately place the builder. Now, in future turns, every time that you put a city tile here, the purple player can play again. You can have builders from several players on the same road and city. You can never place a builder on a field. That's why we have the pigs. The pig increases the value of a field that already contains one of your farmers. So say for example, it's the pink's turn and gets this tile. It will put the pig on this farm. If the pink owns this farm at the end of the game, it will score four points per completed city instead of the standard three. The pig will stay in that field until the end of the game. It does not count when calculating who owns the field. In addition to the pigs and builders, you can also collect goods from cities. Say it's the blues turn. When a player completes a city, even if he doesn't have any knights in that city, he will collect immediately the goods present in that city. Scoring the points for that city proceeds as usual. In this case, the purple would get the points. At the end of the game, the player who has the most wine, wheat or fabric scores 10 points for each. In case of a tie, all players score 10 points. You can potentially score 30 points with these. That's a lot of points in Carcassonne. In Builders and Traders, you have some tiles that have bridges. These are not junctions and do not end the road, but they do split the fields. At the end of the game, add the points like a normal Carcassonne game. Now, do not add points for any unfinished roads with inns or any unfinished cities with cathedrals. And if you've played with builders and traders, you add the points for the goods. The player with the highest score wins the game. Now, my tips to win at these Carcassonne expansions are the river gives you an opportunity to get a head start with the farms, but it can sometimes do some funny turns and you can end up in a very small place, so be careful. Now, if you play with the inns and cathedrals, you can potentially make a lot of points if you play them at the right time. If you feel you are not going to be able to close your city or road, do not play them. You can use the cathedrals and inns against other players to mess up big scoring features. It's a way to ruin someone's plan towards the end of the game. Now, these tiles here are small but can be quite profitable farms and quite easy to defend. Now, if you play the builders and traders with the inns and cathedrals, you will be able to close a lot more cities and roads because there are more tiles, but also because players have an interest in closing them. That's how you play these three Carcassonne expansions. They're a lot of fun. I love to play them all together. If you've enjoyed this video, like and subscribe or leave in the comments a game you'd like us to teach. We'll make more games easy soon. Bye now.